Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today let's talk about texture painting versus vertex painting. And I think it would be a good idea to talk about what situations these tools can be best used. They aren't the same thing, but they're very similar. Vertex paint, if we select an object and go tab, right up here we have vertex paint and that hops into vertex paint mode. You can see this object here has vertex paint going on. If we hop over to this, let's look at the grip for example and we go into texture paint, we can see this has a texture painted on it. So let's dive a little bit deeper into these situations and why I specifically choose texture paint for this object and vertex paint for this object. So to start out, I just wanted to clear up that whenever I'm using these tools, most of the time you're not actually going to see the colors that I'm painting in the final render. If we take a closer look at this grip, the black and white parts are the parts that are bumped in and shiny. So I'm using this as, first of all, a bump map, and second of all, to mix a couple of different shaders together. And the colors black and white don't really show up at all on this object. And if we look over at this monster head here, if I go into vertex paint, you can see that I've painted red and blue, which are really wild colors that are also not really showing up in the final render. I've painted the red spikes, to be like an ivory almost, and I've painted these blue parts to be kind of a weird gross skin looking shader. So this is the best way to use these tools in my opinion, and I think that's probably my opinion just because I'm not actually that good at texture painting. It was even a struggle to get these lines semi-smooth, but they do end up being a really useful tool. So let's break it down. Why did I use texture painting on this object and vertex paint on this object? Well it's a pretty simple answer actually, and you can figure that out if you go into edit mode on these objects. And we can actually select both of them and compare the topology we've got going on here. For this object, we've got some very regular loop cuts, and you can see I probably used a subsurf modifier on it. Everything's nice and smooth. Most of it is quads, I believe. And that is some really nice by-the-books hard surface modeling going on here. But if we go over to this model here and take a good look at it, this thing is an absolute mess. I used the dynamic topology tool in sculpting, and it's actually a really nice freeform way to go about modeling something, but in the end, it gives you this really dense triangulated mesh, which is pretty nasty for UV unwrapping. So texture painting would be pretty difficult on this. Now vertex paint shines actually when you have really nice dense meshes, because the way it works is it's assigning a value to each vertex. If I tried to do vertex paint on this grip object, what we get is this really nasty blocky weird effect, and that's because there aren't actually that many vertices in here. So a general rule of thumb is to use texture paint on something that has a cleaner mesh that's easier to unwrap, and vertex paint on something that has more gnarly topology. So that's vertex paint versus texture paint. I hope you found this little breakdown useful. If you have found it useful and you'd like to subscribe, I'd appreciate that. And on top of that, if you're interested in learning about visual effects in Blender, there's a link in the description that says 5 tips for integrating your CG into live action footage, and this is a completely free tutorial that I've created for you that just goes over some of the more basic and actually really important elements of visual effects in Blender. So give that a watch if you're interested, and hey, I hope you have an excellent day. Cheers!